Hello everybody, this is Bruce from Groxio and I've got the dog on the floor and as usual Maggie is going to be doing our edits so we're excited about this project and as you can tell from the backdrop we're going to be coding the game Tetris. So first let's talk a little bit about how the game works. There are five different kinds of blocks that may be reflected to the left or the, to the right and they may have various rotations but they're going to float down from the center where the user can move them to the left or move them to the right or rotate them clockwise in 90 degree increments. And these are the different shapes that we'll be working with. This is an eye shape. We're going to name these so that we could actually use them in Elixir pattern matching and things like that. You'll be able to see that as we go. This is the L shape and the L shape has three vertical units and one horizontal. And in fact, all of these have are made up of four blocks and, and the blocks are each squares. And if you squint, you can tell that this looks a little bit like a Z. This one looks like an O, the square. And this one looks sort of like a sideways T. But these are the individual units they'll we'll be using in Tetris. So that's where we'll start our game. We'll think about these blocks and think about how we might build a Tetris board or an individual text Tetris block. And we'll, we'll think about the ways that they can be manipulated in the game and we'll code those up as we go. So that's going to be the next thing that we do. So get your editor ready, get your GitHub account ready, and if you'd like, you can join us. Okay, folks, we're ready to get going. And we're actually going to do this in two parts instead of one. If you're an expert or you're relatively comfortable with Elixir's Phoenix, you can go ahead and do a Phoenix new here. But if you're a little bit new to Elixir and you want to focus on the back end of the Tetris game for a little while, let's go ahead and use and use just a mix new for the application. And we'll either copy it over or or access this game in another way when it's time to build our live view component. So the first st step is to create a, a new Elixir project and we're going to do that with an Elixir command called mix. So I'm going to say mix, mix new Tetris. This is going to create a new file and there are going to be individual directories in here. So the ones to pay the closest attention to are the lib directory and the test. Lib is basically think of it as a library where all of our code lives. And test, think of as a place where we can write automated tests to make sure that our program works. So let's change to the Tetris directory. And I'm going to say mix test. And this is going to run some, some automated tests. So let's see what, what that actually did. Well, it looks happy. Everything is clean and green. Let's see exactly which happened. So I'm using an editor called Atom, and you can use whatever you'd like to. First, let's look at the code that was generated. This is a dead simple application. So if you type Tetris and call the function hello on this module, it'll return the Atom or the symbol world. Anything that starts with a colon in Elixir is called an atom, and think of it as a concept. So in this, it's just a concept called world. This is documentation, but since we don't really know what we're going to, to build yet, we're going to go ahead and delete that. And let's look at our test. So this is a documentation test, and since we just stripped away our documentation, we're going to delete that too. But our test says... Our program greets the world. So they called it Texas hello. And as expected, we returned world. So again, if we look at our program, you call Tetris.hello, you get back world. So the Tetris, this part of the Tetris library is going to have the overall game, but we just want a small part of the game, that of an individual block or Let's call, call it a brick, maybe. A Tetris brick, um, and our different bricks might have their own shapes. So um, I am going to create a new file called brick 
.ex. And we're going to open that up. We're first going to define a module. It's going to look basically like this. But our module is going to be created inside of the Tetris one. So let's do that now. OK, so this is a module. It's like a bucket for code. And like most programming languages, Elixir has some sugar or some shortcuts to do some pretty fancy things. And one of the things is associate a, a number of fields or attributes that this particular brick knows about. So let's create a struct. So def struct. And this is going to take a list of atoms. So in Elixir, this is a list. Atoms start with a colon. So we need a name. So if you recall, all of our different Tetris shapes had their own name. We had an L shape and an I shape and a Z shape and an O and a T. So maybe our initial name, by default, maybe that is an O the square shape, or maybe it's an I. Um, that's um, in the game, that seems to be everybody's favorite. And then remember that there is a location or where it shows up on the screen. So we'll say location. Um, and then we're going to give it a point, an X and a Y. And since zero is at, top, at the top of the screen, we'll start it there. And we should probably start it in the middle of the screen. Let's guess that the screen is maybe 80, 80 wide, so let's start it somewhere around 40. We can always change that later. This also needs a rotation. So in Tetris, the rotation comes in 90 degree increment. Uh, and we're going to start ours at increment 0. And let's see, what else do we have? There's also a reflection. The, for example, an L shape could open to the left or open to the right. So I'm going to have re reflection. And that can be true or false. We'll start it off as false. OK, so I'm going to test this out in a couple of ways. The first thing is I'm going to create a test. So this is going to be called a brick so the brick test.exs the exs extension means elixir script and so an elixir script is something like a test or something like a a um, configuration file things that don't have to be super fast but but running them is super convenient like a test so let's create that. And we're actually going to look at the structure of the Tetris test and essentially just copy that. So this is this says Tetris test, but we're actually coding the brick test. And everything in our test file is going to actually is actually going to use the um, the brick uh, module. So we're go going to go ahead and import that. So now we'll be able to refer to the individual commands in this module very efficiently. So let's say we have a new brick. So the way that we actually create a new structure, it's a little bit of an awkward syntax, but bear with me. So. So I can actually spell this out, and I think I'm going to do that. It's it's awkward to have just this struct there. So I'm going to say Tetris dot struct. And so this is a new brick. So maybe I'll have a function. And and that, that function, maybe that just creates a structure like this. And we could take some arguments if we wanted to, but this is enough right now, I think. So I'm going to assert that the new brick 
dot name and what do we say the initial name was an I well let's make it something else so you can see what happens when my test fails and I'm gonna say mix test a sticky e key that's giving me some trouble there okay so we have a couple of problems the first one is that um, is that it expected the name uh, the name to be Z and it's actually on the left is actually I so we ran two tests we ran a documentation test and we got a single failure so let's go ahead and save this test after we've removed our documentation test um, that'll help us and then we'll also go ahead and um, and fix our test our default shape is an I so let's go ahead and do that and let's see if this works okay great so now we have two tests the one that's in the Tetris file that checks out the hello world that works and the one that is in the brick file so that's a pretty good start let's change the shape of our API a little bit though so I think that the um, struct in general is a little bit awkward so so I'm gonna say def new and this thing is going to call the struct for me so I'm going to say struct which is great so now I can go to my test I'm actually in the brick test so rather than call instruct I can call new right and in fact, since I'm doing the import right here, and since the the um, this might not have a new, let's see if this works. It does work. Um, it's complaining to us that we didn't add parentheses, so let's go ahead and do that to make our code nice and tidy. And also, I think that I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to call this using the one-line syntax. just because it takes up less vertical space and I think that that's pleasing I'm gonna go ahead and do that and um, I think that that looks great so the next job that we need to do the new bricks shouldn't always face the same way and they shouldn't always create the same attributes so we can actually play the same game here this is a struct A new random so the new random one's going to do something a little bit different I'm gonna put just empty arguments here I'm going to return a structure that looks something like this and a structure is like a MIP a MIP a structure is like a map in elixir and a map is something that has both keys and values so this is a key, it's the atom called name, and this is a value. And since the thing in the front of the key value pair is an atom, we could actually flip the colon to the other side. And so we choose to do that because it looks a little bit prettier. So um, location is going to stay just the way that it is because, well, everything is always going to start in exactly the same place. and and that's not true of the name so let's actually play some games with a name let's create a random and we'll go ahead and write that code random name and so the characters that we have so I could have A list of symbols I could do it that way or there's a shortcut syntax that's pretty using this thing called a sigil and this means give me an array of words and if I trail that with an atom that is going to turn everything in here to an atom so I have the I the L L the Z the O and the T and this is the same thing as creating an array with all of those things and I'm going to send all that to a function this is a pipe and it means call the next function with the previous argument I'm going to send this to enum shuffle and then I'm going to send that to list 
dot first and that should create a random name for me and let's go ahead and try that out in the console so I'm going to type IEX hyphen S for start and it's going to start the mix project which is going to compile everything up for us and so um, yeah I have undefined function random name it looks like a type random name no I wasn't trolling you it was an actual mistake and it says the variable struct does not does not exist and it's being expanded. So that says that um, this I need parentheses here. So let's see if that cleans up my I'm recompile things. And yes, it cleaned up my warnings just fine. And so I'm going to say um, Tetris or alias. Okay, and this means that I don't have to type tetris.brick every time I want to type something. I can just start with brick. So I'm going to say brick dot, and I'm going to say random name. And that gives me a T the first time, and then an L, then a Z. So that's good. Looks like we're getting random names out of this. And I ought to be able to get... Uh, what is this? What do we call this? Oh, we haven't built a oh, new random. Okay, so it looks like it gave us a, um, a random I. Uh, o and T. So it looks like things are changing as we expect them to. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for our rotation for our rotation and for our um, reflection this is random reflection and this could be a list of true and false then I'll shuffle that and grab the first and random let's see if this works one two three oh uh, that's way better so I can just uh, send that to enum.random that works fine and so I'm going to do the same here. And I'm going to do the same here. Okay, so the random rotation should take a list of uh, 0, 90, 180, 270. And I could actually build that with a range and, um, and a step of 90, but I think that this looks great. It's a little bit more readable. So um, I'm going to recompile this much. Oh, nope, I need to call these things, don't I? So this should be random reflection. Oh, random rotation. Random reflection. Let's see how this is looking. I'm going to recompile. Oh, random reflection. Okay, so we're expanding these once more. So Elixir is telling me I need the um, need the parentheses just to be tidy, just to remove ambiguity. So now I can call brick new random. And so it looks like Z false in 180. I true in 270 so we are working great so now we have a random brick and it's a good time to to take stock in what we've done so far and and we'll see you again um, for the next release